and welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. And me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor. I'm also a certified and I'm also a longtime Yellow Springs resident and a graduate of the Yellow Springs schools, which I'm very proud of and I'm hoping they can get back to in-person learning before too long. All right. Well, let's get started with our exercise today. Chair interval training will need a chair, <laughs> a sturdy one, preferably. And reminder, you can remain seated for the entirety of this workout if you feel that's the right place for you today or any day. Trust yourself. You know you best and do your best. And when you need to, take a rest. Also, consult your physician before doing this exercise program or any new exercise program. And if you feel unbalanced or, or dizzy or, or just overexerted, it's recommended you return to or remain in that chair. Today we'll also need a rubber ball and a hand weight or two. You can uh, usually find these at dollar stores. You could probably order an inexpensive one online. Um, and then you could use a water jug of up to a gallon and a half and fill it to your desired height for your hand weight. So if you don't have either of these things, no problem. If you do, tuck them under your chair or wedge them back there and get in a safe place where you can always see and touch the chair, either behind it or off to the side for our workout today or in your chair. We're going to use our best posture to make our movements easier. The music keeps us on time and it's also been shown to by research and, and scientific studies to be a motivator to move. So let's do it. All right, so using best posture makes our movement easier. It also makes it easier to breathe and that involves elongating our torso whether we're seated or standing, trying to keep those ears right on top of shoulders and right on top of hips. <sighs> and breathe. Inhale, ideally through your nose. And exhale, either through your nose or your mouth, but just breathe at your own pace. Move at your own pace. We'll be working on the ABCs once again. A is for agility, B is for balance, C is for coordination, and S is for strength. Both your cardiovascular strength and endurance and your skeletal muscle strength and endurance. Why? Because research shows if we improve these things, we lower our risk of falls or fall-related injuries. And we improve our cardiovascular strength and decrease our risk of cardiovascular and or stroke related incidents. Just thought I'd share the science. All right, but let's have fun while doing it. <laughs> let's widen out our stance and just sort of rock side to side. Pushing into the floor with the ball of the foot and the toes, whether you're seated or standing. Pulling the shoulders up closer to the earlobes. And just see how that feels before you start to roll them backward. You can roll a little and then gradually make that a little bigger with the elbow or really big if it feels good with the whole arm. feels good to move. It should. Remember, if anything we do today or anything I suggest doesn't feel good to you, you can always make it smaller, reduce the range of motion, or you can go back to the last thing that you were doing that felt fine, or you can just take a rest and breathe and join back in when we get to something you do feel comfortable with. Alright, let's see how it feels to lift our knees up, up. We've got our chair at our side for a balance check. If you're seated and you start to feel tired on the tops of these thighs, 
you might have to get creative and just like pull your heels back to rest those upper thigh muscles and hip flexors. Or you might have to stretch your heels out in front. We'll do all of those things and more, seated or standing, you got choices. But I would like to preview some things that we're going to do later on with a little bit more intensity if it's desired. And a little bit longer to strengthen the heart muscles. One of them is a pattern we've done many times. It's just called singles, doubles, fours, and even eights. So here's our little heel tap in front. We're doing singles, just one each side. Let's do that four more times. Four, three, two. Now let's do doubles or two each side. Excellent. Now let's do four, three, two each side. Good. Now let's try floating it in the air with a little kick and we're balancing. So this will be our balance pattern. And we'll add some brain games to the, this pattern later on, but I just wanted to show you and we'll even go up to eights. So you know we're going there. That's our one of our roadmaps for success today. I learned to set myself and others up for success by building gradually. Okay, the other pattern we're gonna do is an agility pattern. We've done it before, but I'm gonna move a little closer so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. I want you to stay behind or next to your chair. This is gonna go slow at first and then fast later on, but you can always go at your own pace. It looks like this, we're gonna tap out, in, out, march, two, three, out, in, out, march, two, three, out, in, out, march, two, three. Got it? Ready to try a little bit faster? Out, in, out, march, two, three, out, in, out, stay low. Fast feet. One, two, three, out, in, out, march, two, three. We'll do this in different directions and different ways, but I wanted you to see that and feel that rhythm. All right, keep marching. And now we're going to continue to warm up in our chair, but bring your body around to the front, please. Line your heels up so that they're actually physically feeling and touching the chair. Maybe the backs of your calves can also feel the chair. This will give us a good footprint and a stable base about hip width to do our little mini squat. Keep your head and chest up. And see how it feels to reach back a bit with your tailbone and your hips. And when you're ready, just sit down how you best can. Try not to fall or flop. And that builds strength. It's kind of one of the best body weight exercises to build strength in your legs and hips. All right, when we're seated, it's a great time to get a sip of water. And the best way to get anything down low is to step to the side, lean to the side, brace with these strong abdominals. Leaning to the side and bracing and breathing helps protect the lower spine. This is all science-based stuff. And it may sound repetitive, but the fundamentals are so important to get right and that enables us to do more. So we're practicing these movements and patterns and stretches and exercises so that we can do our activities of daily living better and with more ease and reduce the risk of injuries, right? Right. Okay, sit tall at the front edge of your seat because it's so exciting to be here. <laughs> Shoulders in their back pockets. You can try pulling your ears up or your shoulders up towards your ears and then pull them back and then settle them down into your back pockets so to speak and stretch out your right leg stretch out your other leg right and left sitting tall let's practice opposites opposite arm stretches out with the leg good and let's see how it feels to stretch that leg in the air pull the navel in Stretch the crown of the head up. 
good. We're going slow enough. We can do a little ankle glimmering with a little point flex point. Wrists as well as ankles. Point flex point. Say hello. Good. Wrists and ankles need a lot of attention. Let's try stretching with that left leg. Straight, supporting on that right lap. Inhale up. No, if the shoulder hurts to be extended, shorten it, soothe it. But keep the back long and strong as you hinge forward and reach. And let's wave hello again with that foot going out and in and the hand. You can rotate from the shoulder if you want. Good. Inhale, sit back. Pull the navel towards the spine. And draw the knee towards the chest. And then draw big flowy circles with your foot. One direction. And then the other. We'll do some circles with our knee and our foot later on while we're doing our balancing act. But let's see if we can walk those feet out and in, warming up those ankles, and then maybe add some shoulder and wrist movements to that as well. And leave those feet out wide. Don't worry, I didn't forget our right leg. But first we're gonna get a little inner thigh stretch. Gently opening, stretching here. And rotating one shoulder from the back pocket to the front. And then returning, and then the other shoulder. Ooh, walk those feet in, and stretch out your right leg. Sit tall once more, inhale up, up, up. Exhale, supporting on that left leg, and reaching forward, lifting the toes and the fingers up, and then maybe waving hello side to side. You can rotate through that shoulder, slide bend in the elbow, or just move however it feels good to you. Excellent. Sit tall, pull the navel in, supporting and leaning back, drawing the knee towards the shoulder, and drawing big circles once more with the other foot. One way, and then the other. Okay. We should feel a little bit better able to move after that long warm up. But I want to remind you on our perceived exertion scale of one being the lowest intensity and 10 being the highest, we are targeting a medium intensity of like a four. I feel great. Let's keep going to about a seven or eight. Oh, I don't know if I can continue at this pace much longer. Okay? We should also be able to talk while moving. Those two tests, perceived exertion and talk test, are, have been shown via science, evidence-based exercises for you today. Those two tests, perceived exertion and talk test, have been shown to be a better measure of appropriate intensity for seniors than even heart rate. That's why we do it. All right, let's do it. We're going to do about 8 to 10 minutes of aerobic activity. We're going to focus on our agility pattern. I'm going to show it first in the chair, just to show you how you might want to do it if you remain or return to your chair. Those of you who know you want to be on your feet, take your time, get up, double check your area. There's nothing that you can slip, trip, or fall on, and you'll be working at the right side of your chair over here. All right? So whether you're standing or seated, best posture, it makes your balance and your movements and your breathing better. Okay, if you're seated at the edge of your seat, we're gonna do that tapping pattern, out, in, out, march, two, three, then left, in, out, march, two, three. You can move your arm with your leg. This is slow. Same side as you do the tapping, and then opposite as you do the marching. Whoa. Let's try that at this slower tempo. One more time, both sides, and then we're gonna try it faster. If you please, you can do it at your own pace. Hold up. 
Get ready. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Out, in, out, march, two, three, out, in, out. Sorry. I had a little trouble with my engine. Out, in, out, out, in, out. Are you getting it? Light on your feet. Kind of low in your stance, and that'll help your feet to move faster. This is hard! Seated! I have to try these things to make sure that they're appropriate for everybody, whether they choose to sit or stand. One, two, three. Try it. Talk test. Out, in, out, one, two, three. Out, in, out, one, two, three. Can you say it? While you do it? Welcome to my world. <laughs> one more each side. And just march it out. How are you doing? I'm going to transition to standing. You can return to your seat, stay there, or be on your feet. Your choice. Now let's take it over to the other side, just for fun. <laughs> well, and you might choose to be on one side or the other because of, a, of what your needs are, your specific needs. I can't see you, I wish I could, but so trust in yourself. If something doesn't feel quite right for you, you're right. And if you feel like working harder, and, and you've been able to do that with no problems, you're also right. So. Let's get on the left side, if you please. And this time, we're gonna take that same pattern, slow and then quick, forward, shall we? Left leg, forward, back, forward, march two, now right, forward, together, forward. We're just tapping on that, forward, together, forward. Front, front. Slow one more time each side. If you want, you can use your arm. Not fast. Out, in, out. Forward, back, forward. Forward, back, forward. Forward, back, forward. You can do whatever you want with your arms. I'm going to do that cross crawl sort of running pattern. Opposites. How are you doing? We've been tapping. Let's see if we can do it with a little float or a kick. Kick, 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 kick. Front, together, front, or front, back, front. Now we're balancing, so we might need that chair to check our balance to make ourselves feel confident and comfortable. We know it's right there where we can touch it and see it in our peripheral vision. Say it with me now. Kick, kick, or front, back, front. Front, back, front, one, two, three. Can you say it? Front, back, front, one, two, three. It's harder to breathe when you're talking. So don't talk all the time. One more each side. And march it out. How are you doing now on your intensity scale? One to 10. If you can't say a number, that's a 10. <laughs> All right, let's try this pattern again. Switching sides, if you please. Remember, you can stay where you were. This time, we're gonna take that tap backward. Back, together, back, march two, three. Back, together, back, march two, three. Hold the navel in. And stand or sit tall. If you're seated, you kind of have to go back and to the side. It'll be more of a diagonal so that you don't hit your chair. Right? Use that cross crawl arm pattern if you please, or use your chair if you need. One more slow, and then we're going to speed it up. Are you ready? Here we go. Back, together, back. March two, three, back together, back, march two, three. March two, three. It's almost a jog. You know what else you could do? Nothing there. You could just switch feet. It's up to you. 
pump those arms and you get better. I messed up the pattern. But pumping those arms, you get a bigger cardio pump. Your heart has to move a, a little bit more blood. Let's do one more each side. And march it out. How you doing? Still good? We've done the tap for, to the side. We've done the tap to the front. And we've done the tap to the back. Let's try mixing that all up. Shall we? Let's come on over to the other side, just for fun. Make sure you're sort of just enough behind your chair to reach your foot out without kicking it, okay? And you can still see it touch the chair. So we're gonna start on the front, then we're gonna do the side, then we're gonna do the back, then we're gonna do the side. But we'll do each time with both feet left and then right. Get with me on that left foot march. This is a brain train pattern. We're gonna do it all the way through at this tempo. It'll sound like tap, 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 march, two, three, and we'll do left and right in the front, left and right to the side, left and right to the back, left and right to the side. When we get back to the front, we're gonna do it fast. Don't worry, we got this. Ready, left foot front. Front, together, front, march, two, three, right foot, right. Now left to the side, out, in, out, march, two, three, out, in, out. Now back, 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 march, two, three, back with the right, together, back, march. Now side, left, together, left, right, right. Are you ready to go fast to the front? Front, together, front, march, two, three, front. March, two, three, side. March, two, three, side. Back, back. March, two, three. Side, side. Don't worry, we'll do it again. Front, front. March, two, three. Side, side, together. Side, march, two, three. Back, back. Back. Side, side. March it out. Was that a lot to, to ingest? <laughs> if so, we get one more run at it. Let's see if we can do it over here on the right. Let's get that right foot marching. So we'll do our taps to the front, slow, taps to the side, slow, both right and left, and then back, and then to the side, and then we'll go fast again. Get ready, get set, and right foot tap in front, let's go. Front, together, front, march to, three. now the left, together, left, march to the side, good, to the side. Now back, tap, together, tap, march, two, three, tap, together, Tap, and once more to the side at this tempo and then get ready fast to the front tap 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 two three tap 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 march two three side side back back side Woo. front again front front side Side, back, back, to the side, side. Are you ready to try it without tapping? Might need your chair with these kicks. Side, side, back, back, side. I feel like I'm tap dancing. Front. One more time. March it out. Shake it out if you like. If you like, march your right foot back. Let's get a little stretch. We're gonna slow our heart rate back down before we sit back down for our strength interval. Pace that right heel to the ground and stretch a bit on the left or the right calf. Ah, 
feels good. Relax, ease out of it. Ease that left foot back. Toes pointing pretty much straight ahead and the heels pasted pretty much on the floor. Now we're leaning forward to elongate the Achilles tendon gently and that calf muscle. There's actually a large group of muscles. Okay, we're gonna work with our hand weight first, but let's get our best body weight squat to get back in our chair. If you're already seated, just dig your heels in. Get your tailbone back, brace with your abdominals and breathe. Hinge your hips back and feel the floor with all 10 toes. Power up, down slow, just as far as you can go comfortably. Attention to the knees that they don't bow inward and that they don't shoot so far ahead of the toes that it puts a lot of pressure on your knees. So sit back, feel the weight in your heels and all 10 toes. And when you're ready, get seated. Have a sip of water, but attention to protect your back to step to the side, lean to the side. Support, embrace, and breathe. Here's to your health. Okay, we're gonna use our, our weight today. So go ahead and grab that, take your time. Just looking at my notes. I'm gonna do some upper body exercises and then we'll do a second set of those same three exercises with the option of standing on a couple of them. But that's an option. So, I'm going to move this ball out of the way for a second. It'll be right there. <laughs> All right, then sitting kind of near the back of the chair with my heels touching the chair legs because that's where I'll, my feet will need to be should I choose later on to do a squat. Keep the back long and strong and just let the weight hang. You've got two weights, let them hang. Keep your wrists straight and your elbows soft, but not locked. Soft and straight, not hard and straight, if that makes sense. Don't lock your elbows. We're going to just dig our heels into the ground and pull our navel in a brace and see how it feels to bring the weight up. If it's too hard, you can bend your elbows a little bit more. We're gonna do just a bit of a swing. A controlled swing. All right, not too many of these. This is, or this is our version of a kettlebell swing seated. We're gonna just do a couple more. This is working the shoulders and the biceps. And if you're bracing your core and stabilizing your body in that long, strong position, you're working abdominals and lower back. If you were taking your heels in. You were using your hips. We'll do a second set, but. Now, I want you to scooch to the front of your chair. Hold the weight in your right hand, cradle with your left. Hold the navel in, lean back, tucking those, the tailbone under, and looking over your right shoulder, and then coming up and kind of looking out to where the ceiling meets the wall over your, to the left. So we're doing a rotation with a, a little abdominal sit up or a curl up, lean back. And if we want, we can add a shoulder press, a little one or a big one. It's up to you. You can go all the way up, control all the way down and come up with a little, oh, or just keep that weight close to your shoulder the whole time. But add a little rotation and keep that navel Braced in toward the spine, pulling inward like you're zipping up your tightest pants. Okay, when we do that again, we'll do the other side, okay? That was our first set of abdominals with shoulder presses. All right, scooch back in your chair again. Heels touch the chair. Let that weight hang. Get your tailbone back. Hinging back. Pull up through your spine and brace. This time we're going to do an upright row, leading with those elbows. Do your best with this. 
We never, ever, ever need that weight to go higher than our collarbone. Ideally, the elbows are higher than the collarbone. But do your best. Bracing and breathing with the abdominals. The chest is a little ahead of the hips here in this upright row. Digging our heels in to the ground to recruit the gluteals. And that was our first set of upright rows for the upper back and, and rear deltoids and the biceps. Now, we're gonna do those exercises again, starting with the kettle. Let's actually, let's do our abdominal left side. Scooch to the front of your chair. Engage here. Got that left hand holding the bulk of the weight and the right hand cradling. However you best can do it. Hold the navel in as you lean back. Zip up those tight trousers. Look over your left shoulder. Rotate. And look up to where the ceiling meets the wall. Off to the right side. So we're doing a little abdominal curl up with a little rotation. And then if you choose, you can add that shoulder press. Lean back, feel the tension. The more tension you could create with your best form, the greater of your effect will be. Strength training is all about creating tension and a lot of it comes from your brain. You have to focus on the muscles, especially when we're doing abdominal exercises. It's easy to cheat, but you're only cheating yourself. So do your very best form, and then you get to rest or move to other exercises. How about two more on this side? That's good all body exercise. Okay, two more sets. We're gonna do our Kettlebell swings controlled with the option of adding a squat. So to determine if you're ready to squat or if your body's ready for it, take your heels in, touching those chair legs. Get your hips back and your chest forward, head up. Dig your heels in, keep the arms long and soft in the elbows. Just let that weight hang there and see if it feels good to stand up and then not quite sit down. If that feels good and you want to, you can add a little bent arm swing to about nose high. Control it, getting your hips way back, keeping your head up, chest up, reaching back for the chair seat. You'll probably tap it with your hips and you can tap your weight on it. That way you know it's there should you need to or lose your balance and sit down rather quickly. Woo, this is a big whole body exercise. I'm just gonna go for two more. How about you? It got hot in here all of a sudden. <laughs> this exercise program can save you money on your heating bills. <laughs> you can produce your own heat. <laughs> okay, last set, but we need to take a little break from those uh, upper body muscles and just focus on core one more time. This time, hold that weight close to your body. You could just grab it like a bear hug kind of a thing. Scoot your hips to the edge of the chair. Tuck your tailbone under. Lean back. And this time when we come up, we're gonna lift one leg up and up. So we just added a little bit of weight to this upper part of our body, adding to the resistance. We're using these long, strong quadriceps to lift our legs. You should feel it right here. Pull the navel in. Keep the back of the neck nice and long. If your neck or your lower back ache, you could just lean back into your chair and just do the leg lifts. But keep the abdominals braced and keep your breathing to support your lower back. One more each side. Ooh, we're getting a lot of good work in today. Now, scooch back, final set of um, strength with our weight. So, sit those hips way back, touch the chair with your heels. Get your head up, chest up, hips back. 
Dig in with your heels to see if you want to or feel confident and comfortable doing your squats. And then we can add our upright rows. Keep the weight close to your body. Lean with your elbows. Breathe. As you come up, tuck those hips under and squeeze through your glutes. You could be seated the whole time, but dig your heels in. Do your best. Maybe two more. Excellent. These are pretty big exercises, wouldn't you say? If you're using the appropriate amount of weight, I think, I hope you're getting some meaningful activity. Let's have a drink. Toast to meaningful activity. Oh. We're gonna work on balance some more. Balance is so important. But while we're doing it, we're gonna try to be aerobic. So it's a little more challenging in the chair, but you know where you need to be. This is gonna be our singles, doubles, fours, and then eights. And I want to introduce a brain game when we get to the eights, okay? Actually, we'll do it with fours and eights. So we might do some little orders of number patterns, forward and back, and letter patterns, forward and back, okay? Think about that. But first, get yourself on your feet if you care to, or stay in your seat if you want to be there. We're going to be off to the right side if we're standing. If you're seated, you want to be near the front edge of the chair. Best posture. And let's just start with knee lifts, right and left. That feels fine. You can move your arms. You've always got your chair there as your balance check. Let's do four more singles. Four, three, two, double up now to each side. Well, now we're balancing. Engage your core. That'll help your balance. As will your balance check or tapping your toe down. All of those are available to you in your balance toolkit. Two more doubles. Not fours. Four, three, two, one. Good. Four, three, two, one. Now eights. Eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, that's hard. Eight on the other side, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Let's go back to four. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Let's stay with fours and do some of our brain game. Let's take our phone number and we'll say just the final four of your phone number, your own phone number, and we'll say it forward and backward. Let's try it. Two, three, seven, nine, nine, seven, three, two. Get it? Good. Okay, we're gonna do it again with our best friend's phone number. Four, one, four, oh, oh, four, one, four. March it out. I hope you got that little brain game. Just for fun. Let's check our perceived exertion. How are we doing? One, we could work a little harder. Eight, nine, ten, we better slow it down or bring it into a smaller range of motion or sit down, okay? All right, well, we're gonna try it again. This time, but actually, let's go behind our chair. Widen out our stance, sink into our mini squat, and let, try a little hamstring curl right and left. I'm gonna move my chair just a little so I don't keep couch. Singles, you can row both arms, one arm or none, but keep your head and chest up. Keep your foot dorsiflexed. flexed. Engage your, your hamstrings, that's the back of your upper thigh, and your glutes, that's your hips, your butt. Four more, three, two, let's try doubles. Two, good, two, now we're balancing. Two, so don't hesitate to use your chair. If you need just a light touch, gives you a great balance check 
or tap your toes down. Good. Two more doubles. Fours now. Four, three, two. Switch. Four, three, two. Eights now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Switch. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Back to fours. And let's do our brain game again. This time, let's do the ABCs forward and backward. Are you ready? A, B, C, now backward. D, C, B, A. Did you get that? I want you to go to the next set of four letters in the alphabet. E, F, G, H, H, G, F, E. Did you get that? Are you ready to try it? On the next four letters of the alphabet. Oh dear. I, J, K, L, L, K, J, I. March it out. How are you doing? I felt that in the back of my legs a bit. So, hopefully you're doing fine. Let's come over here to the left and do that again, shall we? We'll do it again, but with our knees or straight legs, your choice. So, we'll start with singles, then doubles, then fours, then eights, then we'll go back into fours. We'll do our brain game one more time. You with me? I want to hear you talk to us. Best posture, be able to see and touch your chair. We'll do singles, left and right, little knees or kicks. It's your choice. You could be lifting your knees or kicking. If you're in the chair, you might be tapping your heels out. You could be doing that standing too. I'm gonna pretend to jump rope. Okay, four more. Three, two, doubles to each side. Two more doubles. I guess that was four doubles. <laughs> four now. Four, three, two. This is hard. Four, three, two. How about eight? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Other side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, back to fours. Four, three, now think of a four letter color. Four letter color. We're gonna spell it forward and back. B, L, U, E, E, U, L, B. Good, now think of a four letter name. Your favorite four letter name. And we'll spell it forward and back. Here we go. M, A, Y, A, A, Y, A, M. Woo, march it out. How you doing? Still able to talk? We're gonna do that one more time, folks. If you please. Behind our chair with some hip work. So start in your mini squat, hip width or wider stance. Be able to see and touch your chair. And we're gonna do a little mini squat and then we're gonna do right and left, hip abduction, keeping the legs sort of straight. Dorsa flexing the foot, strengthening these lateral hip muscles. Big arms if you like, or none, or one. These are our singles. Four more times. Four, three, two, one, and double. Double. Two more doubles. Breathing. Now fours. Four, three, two, one, and other side. Three, Two. Can we try eight? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight on the other side. Eight, seven, torso flex that foot. Four, three, two. Now down to four. So this time we're going to do a quick multiplication tables. Let's start with fives. How about five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Now down, twenty. 15, 10, 5, and 6 is 6, 12, 18, 24, 24, 18, 12, 
six. Oh, my hips are burning. How are yours? <laughs> Good news. We, we are ready to transition to some strength work in the chair. But let's slow our breathing and stretch our hips a little before we get seated. If you're already seated, you're fine. So those lateral muscles, if you put your weight in one leg with the knees straight but not locked and push, you can feel them being lengthened. You might also want to stretch through the side. Hmm. And then we can do the other. So I'll come over here so you can see what I'm doing. Knee is straight but not locked, pushing into that hip to feel those muscles you're contracting and shortening, lengthening. It's not rocket science, but it is science. This is our evidence-based exercise program that I get excited about science. And I, I credit the Yellow Springs school system. I had excellent teachers the whole way, kindergarten to 12th grade here. I loved it. Well, actually I went to fourth grade in, in California, but that's a different story. So get your heels close to your chair, get your hips back, keep your head up figuratively and literally and do squats. We do squats. Some people, you've heard the expression, oh, they don't do squat. Oh, yes, we do. We do squat. <laughs> a lot, if you like. Or a little. Or not. Because I'm trusting you to trust your body. If something hurts, don't do it. If something's challenging, but you feel comfortable and very tiny bit uncomfortable, that's okay. Anything sharp, sudden shooting pains, don't do it. Brace with your abdominals as you get yourself a sip of water <laughs> on the other side. Okay, let me check where we're at with our timing. We need to use our ball, okay? I'm going to find back here. Okay, we've got a little bit of time left. We're going to take some extra time for balance and relaxation at the end today. This is our last upbeat song. So, we're going to use this ball to work on our inner thighs, outer thighs, and core. Sitting at the edge of your seat, place the ball above the bony knee joint, feet a little closer to the knees, brace here, and let's see how it feels to squeeze all the air out of the ball. And exhale while you do that squeeze. Very important to keep breathing. Now adding on with good form, dig your heels in to create more tension. Remember I said tension is what will build muscular strength. And we can create it by using good form, using our brain. Dig those heels in and squeeze. Lift your toes up and create tension on the shins. So now we've got the inner thighs on duty. Booty on duty. When we dig our heels in, we get our hips and our hamstrings involved and shin muscles by lifting those toes. Good. If you want to add some upper body exercise to this, be careful, be mindful. If anything hurts, don't do it. But place the heels of your hands into your seat and see how it feels to push the palms in and straighten at the elbows a little. Pull your navel in and just see if you can lighten the load in your seat. Your, your bottom might not actually leave the chair, that's okay. But we're doing a silver sneaker style chair dip with inner thigh squeezes and it's a big whole body exercise if you're doing your best. Maybe four more, breathing the whole time. Maybe it hurts your hands or your arms or your neck to do the arm work. So just do your best with the leg work. And let's end with a little pulse. Inhale, slow, like you're breathing your favorite aroma, and then exhale, slow and gentle, like you're blowing out a candle. Awesome. Grab your ball. <clears throat> Front edge of your chair. We're going to build grip strength. Wrists are straight. Opening your hands in between, and then squeezing as best we can. Now, if it hurts your thumbs, you can squeeze with the four fingers against the heel of the hand. Let me show you what I mean by that. You don't have to involve your thumbs. You can just squeeze. You can try that. Okay? 
So grip strength plus core strength. Either or, your choice. At the edge of your seat, feet together, tuck the tailbone under, lean back, pull the navel in. As you sit up, exhale and squeeze the air out of the ball. Lean back, inhale, squeeze. Good. Do it at your own pace. But breathe. If it hurts your hands, if you have arthritis and any part of that grip strength is not working for you, just do the abdominal slide. Slide up, pull the navel in, slide back. If it hurts your lower back or your neck, you stay back in the chair and bring that knee up to the chair, to the ball. If you want to add resistance, you can push the ball under the knee as you squeeze. So we're doing a lot of abdominal exercise. If it feels good, you can reach that ball up and back over your head. But remember, it has to work for you. How about, let's do our best four more. Or stop when you need to. Wow, that was a piece of work. All right, I have one more exercise I would like to do with the ball. I'll show you seated and then it's your choice to try it standing. This is hip abduction. So we're trying to keep our body stable and straight vertically as we open our hips. So we're gonna start with the right side. You can just take the ball, press it into the side of the right leg. Do reach the crown of your head up to the ceiling and breathe as you open the hip and resist by pushing that right hand and the ball into the right side of your leg. Now, we're gonna do two sets and you have the option of standing on the second set. We're only gonna do two more on the right side here, breathing the whole time. And then we'll do the left. So, sitting tall once more, remember, Try to keep your spine straight and tall. Place the ball on the outside of the left thigh. Push and resist that left leg opening. We're working a little bit of the chest here as well as the outer hip. I'm just gonna do about four more on the left and then we'll do a second set, if you please, standing. I'm hoping it's a little bit of hard work for you. Oh, I hear my new kitty cat crying out. I had her in the back room because she was trying to knock over the camera. So I might have to let her out before we end this class because I, I don't want her sad. Anyway, stand tall if you're standing, close enough to the chair that you could touch it. Now pull that right toe up in the air, balls on the outside of the right thigh. Keep the body straight and tall. We're only gonna do about eight. Try your best to keep the body and the head stretching upward. The tendency is to lean away from the movement. Breathe. Keep that right foot toe up. Excellent. The side musculature of the, of the thighs and the hips, very important for our balance and our walking gait as is being able to keep that toe from dropping. Toe drop or foot drop, you might have heard of that. So, best posture, whether you're seated or standing, on the left. Pull that left toe up, pull the navel in, stretch the crown of the head up as you resist leaning, and you resist by pushing that ball into the hip. Just four more. Three, two, one. Whew. You can put your ball down if you're seated or standing. If you're standing, it would be good to get a little toe and ankle strength. Even if you're seated, you could try this with feet together. Come up to the tips of your toes and tuck your hips under. Squeeze your inner thighs together. 
and just stay up there on those tippy toes. Come on down and peel your toes up off of the ground. Tuck your hips under. Get the soles of your feet off the ground and balance on your heels. This one's harder. Tuck those hips under. Look, no hands, but I can grab the chair or put my feet down on terra firma whenever I need. All right, well, we're gonna to transition to some seated stretches, some breathing and relaxation. So you know, if your feet are touching the front legs of your chair and you lost your balance, you're safe at home. <laughs> and that's important. Um, let's get our breathing slowed a bit before and do some mindful breathing. And then we'll add that breathing to our stretches. So, lower your gaze if you would, or even close your eyes. You can put one hand on your abdomen, touching your navel. We want to encourage the abdomen to expand so the lowest parts of the lungs get to fill up first, okay? And you'll be able to feel it with your hand there. Then the thumb of that hand can be touching your ribs. That's the next part of the lungs to expand. You'll feel your ribs open outward, like a expanding circle where you threw a pebble into a still water pond. And then the, the other hand can go up near your heart and you'll feel the top parts of your lungs expand and your chest will actually rise a bit and perhaps feel like it's going forward. So let's try that. Mindful breathing, relax, slowing through your nose with your inhale. And then maybe exhale as if you're blowing out a little candle silently, softly, effortlessly. It usually takes me about three breaths to really relax. So you do your best with your best three to five inhale, exhales. instead of all that bracing we did and really fill your lungs fully and exercise them as well. It does take some mindful brain-body connection so let's continue with that while we stretch. Simple but not always easy. So try sideways. Your left hip will be off the front edge of the chair. As you hinge forward to coax that left leg back. Ideally, the knee is drifting down toward the ground. The foot is relaxed. As we breathe, filling the lungs from the bottom to the top, we can likewise stretch upward. Even opening our spine to a gentle arch, if it feels good. And exhale. Toward the chair back, stretching that left side of our body, even hinging at the elbow, stretching that left tricep, and then relax and come out. As we turn to the other side, let's pause sitting facing forward to get a chest opener. Inhale as we peel back our closed hands. And our shoulders, chest, lift the heart, and then exhale, closing, interlacing the fingers if you like, pushing out all that stale air, arching the back, like a cat. Let's do that one more time. In yoga, we call this a cow as we open to a slight sway back, and then closed like a cat arching its back naturally after it's stretched. My cat, I gotta go let her out. Turn your body to the right side and do your best while I get my kitty cat out. I'm, I'm watching. 
Do your right leg like, stretch. <laughs> I could hear her crying, maybe you couldn't. Okay, did you already lean to your chair back? Take a nice deep breath, filling your lungs. Letting that elbow hinge. And ease out. Ooh, I love those, that particular stretch for the hip flexors and quadriceps. I feel it on my shins and my tops of my feet also. Okay. And let's take that cow cat and add on. We're gonna do an airplane with it. Sitting near the edge of your chair. Inhale, through your nose, opening. Lifting your heart and then exhale. Interlace the fingers. Stretch. This time as you open with your in breath. Latch those hands somewhere behind you on your chair. And inhale as you lengthen your spine from the tailbone up to the tip of your head. Like an airplane ready to launch. And as you exhale, you can tilt your head to one side. Now you need that tripod along, okay Warren? We had an addition to our family in this new year. The other side. She needs some exercise too. All right. So as we finish up today, I have a couple reminders I want to tell you about. Please get a sip of water. Please continue to stay safe and strong. I wanted to tell you about a few things. Uh, they're happening, and, and I'm taping these shows now approximately a week ahead. So when this show airs, um, it will be the third quarter, I believe, for Yellow Springs schools. And I just want to encourage the Yellow Springs school staff and, and uh, school board, and especially the students and the families, to, to stay strong, stay connected, just like I want our seniors to stay strong and stay connected and double down on your on your safety measures because we want to be able to go back to in-person schools and that's so important for our, our our young people and um and so wanted to tell you that by the time this airs it'll be um tier 1b and teachers will be included as well as seniors 65 and older in the vaccinations that are being administered. We have, we have the vaccinations, but we're having a little trouble getting them to people. So keep on checking the Yellow Springs News. Our local leaders are giving wonderful advice. Yay, you know, think global, act local, and, and know this. Um, even when you get your vaccination, um, and right now there's only about one and a half percent of Ohioans that have gotten it. Even when you get it, and then, depending on the type of vaccine you get, 21 or 30 days later, you get the second one, you could still be a host. You could still infect others. So uh, not until we get uh, herd immunity or approximately 70 to plus percent of individuals vaccinated, we're, we're, we're not out of the woods, not anywhere close. So trust in science learn science in school <laughs> and um, be true to your school. Yay. I don't need these anymore, but I do to read the small print. So um, stay safe, stay strong, stay connected, and I'll see you soon.